Living with daily persistent pain is exhausting. Even the thought of overcoming our pain seems insurmountable. Understand why pain is complex and learn actionable steps that will improve your quality of life. Now let's join Amber Kylik on A Path from Pain. This week we're talking about how to build healthy habits. You'll want to hear this. First, hit that follow button. I specifically say healthy because we all know how easy it is to take on unhealthy habits. I want to talk about this as well as an app that's available called Go Get Fit. It's specifically built to help you build good habits like moving more and sitting less. Here's why I love the app. One, it's free, no cost. Two, it is based on science and you know I love geeking out about science. Number three, it's designed to link you to a professional in the movement rehab physical therapy industry so that you get weekly support, still no cost. This professional is not going to send you a program. That part's up to you. But they will keep an eye on you to watch if you're working on your chosen goal, if you've fallen behind, or if you're crushing it. They are there to help cheer you on, and it helps you to know that there's someone looking to hold you accountable. Now, if you've been listening to a few of my podcasts, you'll be getting the idea that no matter where you are in life, if you're sedentary and or living with daily pain, it will take work on your part to build the life you want. This app also takes a bit of work. Each week, you need to enter your schedule for the next week's activities. This can be as easy as copy and pasting your previous week, or you can take five minutes to rebuild and adjust from scratch. This isn't that much work. But in a world full of distractions and apps, it's something to keep in mind. I will say the benefits far outweigh the work if you're someone who can use that little extra help. You start by entering your information. And the fourth reason I love this app is that it's all built around the strictest of privacy rules for healthcare. Did you know that your healthcare information is more valuable than your banking information? This also brings me to the fifth reason I love this app. Because if you have a professional overseeing your progress and you have an outstanding doctor that's involved with your health program, the professional can send your progress to your doctor. This is teamwork. I've been using this app with clients for well over a year now, and I will say that I love the support that it gives. So with that being said, let's get into building healthy habits. I chatted with Dr. Rolo, a physician involved with Go Get Fit, and three tips for building healthy habits. Hello, Dr. Rolo. Tell me a bit about yourself. I have my PhD uh, from Western University uh, in um, behavioral medicine, uh, predominantly in health behavior change surrounding lifestyle behaviors. So how did you get involved with Go Get Fit? Peter, who's the CEO of Go Get Fit, uh, reached out to me on LinkedIn and we engaged in a few uh, conversations and uh, I guess there was a mutual passion and kind of a a mutual interest in in solving the inactivity crisis. And so the rest is history. Before we get too deep, what exactly is the difference between a healthy and unhealthy habit? Let's just say looking at the long-term impact One contributes to our quality of life, our physical, mental health, while the other really doesn't. So when we're looking at building good habits, they take some effort and work. We know how easy bad habits are to make. Think right now of two poor habits you may have. Mine are easy. The unconscious grab and scroll of my phone first thing in the morning. And getting caught up in my busy day and putting off movement. Yes, even I put off exercising sometimes. So, the first key factor that I feel is key to building this healthy habit is attaching our new habit to a contextual cue that you already have. This can be something that's tied to the time of day, a location, a person, even attached to an item like running shoes. With my habit of grabbing my phone each morning, I tend to try and tie this to the cue of going to bed. Before I head upstairs, if I can get into the habit, consistency, which we'll talk about next, of plugging it in in, down in the kitchen, setting the music and alarm for the next day, done. And I know you've heard me talk about movement snacks, especially doing squats while you brush your teeth. These little things add up. This isn't about hitting up the gym for an hour, is it, Dr. Rolo? 
Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, uh, I mean, I couldn't agree more. And and just two kind of thoughts on that related to, you know, contextual cues, whether it be timing or or someone in your life who you link that behavior to, uh, social yeah. support, obviously, or or physical cues like the shoes in you know a specific place or your hockey gear, whatever it may be. Um, you know that you you mentioned movement snacks and 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 so what I think about there is. You know, there's a lot of research now and, and exactly that, you know, that small steps actually lead to bigger changes than trying to, you know, bite off that, uh, you know, you know, bigger bites. And and yeah. there's a lot of work now and, and uh, papers that have been published in Harvard Business Review from a from a business standpoint and, and, and productivity and whatnot. Uh, in the workforce, suggesting the same thing, you know, that that small steps and, and consistency leads to an actual in the case of business and workforce, you know, larger productivity, but the same is true from healthy habits that especially for someone who, you know, perhaps hasn't exercised before or isn't regularly physically active or, or, ha you know, hasn't been sufficiently active for long enough to see the benefits that it brings with it, that those, as you suggested, uh, uh, and, and I'm deviating because I just have so much in my head here, but, no, totally. uh, you know, there's, there's recent now population based studies that suggest that, you know, what used to be, you know, as little as 10 minutes can reap, you know, huge benefits from a health and well being standpoint. Well, now it suggests that as you just said, with the movement breaks, you know, as little as one to two minutes, uh, can can bring drastic significant improvements to longevity and energy and fatigue and things of that nature right through to cardiovascular health over the long term. And that not all exercise has to be that structured planned bout, you know, of yeah. 60, 30 to 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous, you know, where you go to a gym uh, and that, you know, there are hundreds of ways to incorporate movement into your day. Uh, and that, you know, um, any bit, even small bits are better than nothing. And so I'm a firm believer in, in, in finding ways to build movement, uh, that work for you. Now for consistency. I've already walked upstairs to bed a few days where I've forgotten to plug in my phone or reached the end of the day and needed to fit in something for movement. This is where consistency in the habit helps. And I've always found that if you tie your new habit to the established one like that cue, it makes it consistently way easier. But how long does it take for this consistency to build a good habit? Now, we've heard the 21 days makes a habit, but is this true? I asked Dr. Rollo about that. There was a recent review that was published uh, that actually suggested that, you know, that we can't actually conclusively say that 21 day period or, or yeah. any time frame for that matter, and that it is largely dependent on on the behavior that we're discussing. So whether it's smoking or seatbelt use or teeth, you know, oral hygiene or nutrition, uh, and that it's actually largely individual based. And, yeah. and even in that, it, it depends on things like the context and life, you know, uh, stages that you're in, age, etc. And the list goes on. So it's all individual. One person may have a habit formed within a week. Another person may not be able to get the habit to stick for a few weeks. With that being said, failure is something that will happen. Don't get frustrated with yourself. Now, the third aspect of building a good habit is building a reward into your habit. Dr. Rollo, tell me, what is the best motivation? Maybe rewarding yourself with a big piece of chocolate cake after each workout? Yeah, uh, that's a a good one. Um, that's where, you know, behavioral compensation is a, a term, you know, generally used, the, you know, and we, we tend in the past, you know, this is big with sleep or nutrition, the, as, as you just mentioned, you know, the idea that, okay, you were active. So you reward yourself with that, you know, that treat, uh, well, how much of that treat now is going to out or undo what you just did in terms of your activity. And so yeah. I think behavioral compensation is a is a big thing to be mindful of okay so let's leave the chocolate cake out of it what truly is the best way to stay motivated some of the most um reinforcing rewards uh tend to be you know your own enjoyment and 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 the context of fun and i think we've uh tend to forget that um that if you pair that with what we know about behavior change that intrinsic motivation piece 
Um, you know, if you can somehow make the reward uh, your own fun, enjoyment, uh, things of that nature, that that goes the longest uh, from a behavior change standpoint. Now, with that being said, let's touch back on failure. Failure is how we learn, but we look at it in a negative light so frequently that we see it as something that should be avoid- avoided and we get down on ourselves about it so easy. We need to acknowledge that failure is expected. It's something that actually helps set us up for success. Dr. Rolo, what, how would you explain the benefit of failure in terms of building healthy habits? I had that, that recognizing failure, you know, is, is truly a part of, of success and ultimately that successful habit or behavior change that, you know, that setbacks are a good thing and that they, they lead to learning opportunities to, to recognizing, you know, what works, what might not work for you to, to engaging in self-reflection for, you know, well, well, why did I hit that, you know, that obstacle or barrier today? And why, you know, was I not successful? Let's say in the case of trying to become more active, you know, you know, today wasn't my day or today or this week wasn't my week. And, and, you know, engaging in that self-reflection and, and thinking about that setback and and learning from it uh, could be, you know, uh, a fruitful um, opportunity for people. I've talked a little bit about the app, Go Get Fit. Before we wrap up, who would you say that it's for? And Dr. Rolo, is this an app that everyone will always need to use? It, uh, as much as it's a behavior change uh, platform and and it's focused obviously on on behavior change with regards to physical activity. Uh, it very much is an early stage, uh, and by that I mean you know that it's meant for individuals who are previously inactive, uh, who are you know, uh, activity inexperienced, uh, who are at risk, whether it be a health condition or or such forth. But it's it's focused on that eighty to ninety percent of the population that aren't sufficiently active. We recognize that you know we don't want them to be using us forever. Uh, yeah. In fact, by them not using us, it hopefully will mean that they've established that agency over their health and and established you know patterns uh, of engaging in a healthy, active lifestyle. This app was created to help people get moving for everyone who uses it to commit to their habit building movements and have the support that they need. But let's not just use this app for movement and exercise. Let's get the small things in there. Drinking more water, calling a friend, spending time reading, not using your phone as much. Anything that you think would be a good habit to build for you, add it in there. So let's review a little. Dr. Rolo offers these extra tips. Consistency and frequency, which we've discussed, you know, contextual cues, hints, clues, things to to make it, you know, easier and and, uh, as unconscious as possible, uh, if you will. Uh, Rewards and reinforcement, obviously, as I mentioned, you know, positive reinforcement. uh, You know, everyone likes to be encouraged and supported in their endeavors. And the same is true when it comes to healthy habits. And like my goal working with people is that I don't want to be their person forever. I want them to work with me so that they can build and go and do the things they love so that they continue with life, right? So I can help them get over those first few steps or hurdles or obstacles and set those goals in a realistic way. But essentially, I want everybody to just be able to go and do what they want to do in an active lifestyle. And there's so many things that you can do being an active person And so many options that you can pursue that you actually enjoy doing versus this idea that we need to go to the gym three days a week. We need to do strength training. We need to do cardio. But there's so many activities that can blend all that together. Yeah, absolutely. I I mean, I I think you have it bang on. And I I obviously am an advocate for that. Uh, I mean, I do go to the gym. Uh, regularly. And that's part of me. But I mean, this is again, where we could go into length here about, you know, I'm someone who has now established, you know, those that lifestyle. And, and I've been doing this for years, but for someone, uh, and this is, you know, there's often the argument, you know, why getting people to exercise is so hard and why getting people to be less sedentary 
should actually perhaps be the goal at the forefront of behavior change with someone who isn't an act, an exerciser, if you will, because, you know, uh, to get someone to be less sedentary, you can do this through almost limitless micro interventions throughout the day. Uh, yeah. It doesn't take extra time because, you know, by not sitting, you're automatically moving. And so uh, it's also it could be, you know, less intense, uh, less daunting. And so there's a lot of theories out there that suggest that, you know, for someone to get them moving, um, you know, the first step should be instead of getting them to exercise, it should just be to get them to sit less. And so uh, I think, you know, that might be a, a, a kind of a little, um, yeah, a little food for thought there. Yeah. If you exactly. Sit less. <laughs> we'll put it on a t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sit less, move more and more often is the, uh, the key. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks for taking the time to chat with me. Speaking of movement, I have a bike ride scheduled in 15 minutes. So there you go. Schedule it, log it, and uh, you'll yeah. be uh, recognized for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, reach out anytime and I'd love to chat with you further going sure. forward. Sounds good. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, no problem. Bye, Amber. Bye. I had a great chat with Dr. Rollo, and we could have kept talking for so much longer. So what do you think? Do you need a little guidance in setting up your goals? You have choices. Adding in a few minutes a day, as small as it seems, research is clearly showing that those add up. What can you add to your day? Squats while you brush your teeth? Parking a few lanes further from the store? Building a mini stretch routine right when you step out of bed? The ideas are endless. Are you interested in learning more? You can check out some of my articles on Substack. My YouTube channel, Critical Movement YYC, has tons of videos. Or join me for the free five-day Change Your Pain program. You can even message me to learn how I can help you build your path from pain. Either way, hit that subscribe and follow button. If you like this episode, let me know why in the comments below. If you learned something that's helped you, maybe share this episode with a friend. Word of mouth is my best friend. Either way, I look forward to having you listen next time. Enjoy.